Okay, here it is, the Alpha Juno 2, and we're gonna do some repairs on it. I bought this off Craigslist, off a local um, owner who had owned it since the 80s. He was the first owner. He was a bass player that just wanted uh, another synth to play with, and it's been kind of sitting around his house for many, many years. Obviously, the battery is dead. You can see the memory is corrupt in the, on the memory side of things, although the preset patches still load. Off wrong, off wrong. And you can see I'm just playing some of the keys here, and there's some dead keys. So that was the first thing I noticed is that not not all the keys work. And I fixed keyboards before on D50s and Juno, uh, JX10s and such. So. I've seen some of the problems with this sort of keypad on the Roland since. It's not always the pads. Sometimes it is. Quite often, it's actually trace issues on the key, on underneath the keyboard. So just checking out some of the other features, but it seems to be working otherwise. Like the OS is good, and a lot of the functions are functioning. It is making sound. That's awesome. For the most part, uh, the synth is in pretty good cosmetic shape, actually. It's, it's a really good looking Juno. Um, again, it's been kind of sitting in closet for years. So here I'm marking the keys to just tape quickly which ones are not, not functioning. Yeah, so we'll mark them with tape and then, and then uh, when I pull the keys off, I'll be able to look underneath the traces there where those keys are and just try to scope it out with that. Okay, here we are taking it apart. Uh, there's a lot of screws. It's a pretty compact little keyboard, so um, because of its small sort of width, I guess everything's kind of you know tight inside it. So it's got a lot of screws on it. Just make sure it's pretty solid. apart. It's a pretty nice uh, clean design. It's pretty clean inside too. There's the power supply section um, and capacitors. There's the main board you can see and it tucks in underneath the keyboard actually by quite a bit and there is the chorus um, board with the BBD chips. Um, just looking at it here, some pretty good wiring. There, right there, is the that's the plug to the backlight inverter that was making the sort of buzzing sound when I first got it. So I'm going to pull that out because we won't be using that anymore. Uh, there's a nice shot of the IR3 RO5 uh, Roland chips and ICs and the BBD board and the chorus module. And then, uh, yeah, let's just take apart the power supply first. So that's the first thing I was gonna do is just pull the power supply out and uh, recap the power supply. Keyboard uh, slides out, it's a bit tricky, but it, it actually rests in underneath the motherboard. And here's the actual uh, main board. Uh, you can see the Roland uh, DCO chip there, and the CPU, and the ROM there with the U on it. Uh, there's the IR3R05s, six of them. And then the ROM right there, and it's version, I have version 2.5, which is technically the latest and last ROM, 
um, if I roll it. And you can see the battery as well. Uh, it looks pretty puffy, so obviously that's got to come out. I've got my parts here now, so I'm going to just take out the, the main board and uh, let's desolder the battery and get a new battery in there. Definitely need uh, a proper desoldering uh, station, so I'm just using a manual gun right now. But uh, it's okay. I have an electronic engineering uh, degree, so I'm pretty used to desoldering with a manual tool. It's a bit takes a bit longer, but it still does a pretty good job. Let's put a new battery in. Make sure everything gets cleaned up. Properly. Okay, here's the power supply being recapped. Let's pull out the old caps. Put in the new ones. Make sure the leads are trimmed properly so there's no shorting on the under underside of the power supply. Pretty straight ahead, put the new power supply back in. Uh, now let's look at the keyboard. Uh, so we got the keyboard out and we're gonna try to figure out some of the problems we got with this keyboard. So it's obviously it's a little tedious to just take it all apart, take all the springs off. I put the black springs and the white springs in a different little containers because they do seem to be slightly different in size even though some people say that they are the same. And then these little uh, plastic strips that hold the keys like in place and pop those out. And then just one by one pull all the keys off. And I like to just keep them in order so when I put them back in uh, they're easy to put in because you just you just grab them one by one in the same order you pull them off and the black keys don't need to be in order because they're all the same you can see i marked the keys that were taped so i know where the traces are and then now i'm just going to wring out the traces and as you can see uh yeah i'm just Checking continuity. You can see that line's good. That line's good. For some reason, those lines are not good. So we do have some trace issues under the board as expected. Uh, yeah. I can kind of see a little bit of trace damage there where my finger is. And it looks like there might be something up with that trace there. So we're just gonna rebuild that trace. And I've got some jumpers in now. Uh, rebuilding those traces uh, where the they were just corroded away. It's sometimes hard to see, but it's usually there. Once you ring it out, you can you can easily uh, diagnose those issues pretty quick. Now just testing, just make sure it works before I put it back together. Yeah, yeah. The keys that were not working are now working. And here's the aftertouch strip. Um, and I'm just pulling it apart just to have a look at the carbonation underneath it. It's definitely old. Um, but I've heard you can still get some use out of these. So I'm just gonna put it back together. And I likely will do uh, um, a resistor modification on the circuit so that that actually uh, works again. It's probably the easiest thing to do. And then now let's put the keyboard back together. Okay, here's 
uh, something that I always like to do, which is uh, replace the power input connector with a three-prong grounded connector, um, just to get rid of those silly Roland uh, two-prong cords. Put some proper earth grounding in this. Just soldering the mains in to the connection now. Make sure the wires are nicely seated and then heat shrinked. I like to add some heat shrink. Okay, and then this is the part that's arrived from synthparts.com. This is the new OLED uh, display. Um, so we're going to pull the old display out because it's the backlight is shot and, you know, it's just not as nice looking as an OLED. Install instructions. There's the OLED. Okay, let's pull out the old uh, 1 by 16 LCD display and just get that out of there. You can see there's the inverter cable. I just cut it, the white and black cable and install the new OLEDs, very simple. Just plug in the ribbon cable, put in uh, the four screws. Let's turn it on, check it out. And there it is. But unfortunately, it has the ROM issue where it only displays half the screen. And I found out at this time that even though I did have the latest ROM, I didn't have the latest ROM with the updated upgrade for OLEDs. So I had to order that, um, and it came in the mail here, and here's the new ROM. Uh, so it is the same ROM, 2.5, with the OLED upgrade. And as I got that, I also realized that the old ROM was not socketed. It was actually uh, hard soldered into the board, which is pretty much the first time I've ever seen a ROM not socketed before. So maybe in the later um, Junos, they decided to just just solder it in. Maybe in the, this one might be a later unit, and so they probably just were like, we're never going to change this, so they soldered it in. And so I had to hand desolder uh, that, that IC, and there it is popped out carefully, and it's clean up the pins. Um, looks pretty good, pretty clean. And then I put in a nice uh, socket for that. Uh, there's a socket in there now, and now I can actually s place in uh, the new, the new 2.5 ROM with OLED upgrade. And uh, yeah, great. And stick that in. Just make sure it's seated properly. You can see the new battery in there as well got so that's ready to go let's get this thing back together and make sure when the keyboard's in that the aftertouch strip is connected and it's all set right so I can now screw it in properly once I've got it set right Okay, here's the final sound demo. I'm super happy with the way this turned out, and the old, new old looks great. Synth sounds awesome, and this is one really nice Alpha Juno 2 for my collection. Okay, thanks for watching.